My name is Jenna Pallant, and I'm a style crazed full-time creative living in sunny San Diego. In 2016, my husband and I purchased our forever home, and now in between balancing my upholstery business, our four dogs, and just life in general, I'm going to renovate our home room by room, project by project myself, with some fun help from a few of my friends along the way. And I'm gonna share it all with you right here on YouTube. So, are you ready to see a room bloom? Welcome color lovers and fellow ORCers to a brand new episode of Room Bloom on YouTube. Now that I've tacked down the new inside seats of this 1970s circular sofa, it's time to move on to the inside backs with its 116 button tufts. Yep, that's right. Today I'm giving you a crash course in upholstery tufting. With that being said, however, I would be remiss if I didn't tell you that this is a very advanced upholstery skill set. So even though I encourage you all to try your hand at your own upholstery projects, this is definitely a process in upholstery that's not for the faint in heart or patience. I mean, I still get frustrated with button tufting and I'm experienced, so yeah. But I did promise you all that I would take you through the entire transformation process with this sofa, so here we are. To get started on the retufting upholstery process, you're going to take the original stuffing you kept from the sofa's teardown and reapply it over the sinuous spring stretch cotton, paying close attention that the stuffing relines up with the original location of the button holes. Next, take a new layer of Dacron, aka polywrap, that's the entire length of the inside back and layer it over the old stuffing. Then taking a sharp razor blade, lightly cut the Dacron to mimic the diamond tufting pattern. This will help with how the fabric will lay with the hand tufting. And then it's time for fabric, making sure to cut a large enough piece so there is ample available on the top, bottom, and both ends as the tufting will, per se, eat some of the fabric as you tuft. To get started on the actual tufting, you want to start in the dead center of your inside back and sink the first button. To do that, you will run nylon button twine through the button's back loop and then string both ends of that twine through the eye of the button needle, pulling the twine so there isn't much left on the button side end. Moving to the back side of the inside back, finish pulling the button needle through. Next, you will sink the button into place with the ends of the button twine by making a slip knot with one end and then running the opposite end of the twine through said slip knot. Then to position the button in place, use a folded piece of scrap Dacron as extra resistance for the tufted button and pull the two twines ends until they're as tight as possible together and not in place. You will not, however, be tacking down any of these buttons permanently, at least not yet. Now I do realize I haven't taught y'all how to make your own fabric covered buttons, but we are just going to have to leave that for another day and another room bloom episode. All right, so after you sink the first button tuft, you want to work directly from that dead center button, slowly building the tufted diamonds us designers know and love on upholstered furniture, repeating those same steps from the first button again and again. I cannot stress to you enough to not get ahead of yourself and work on these tufts out of order, as there will be no way of keeping the fabric nor its tufts even or consistent. Tufting is hard enough the way it is, and you will run into enough problems just by simply going in order with the tufts. For example, you see how this is a nice form tufted triangle, and this button up here just looks a wee bit off? That's because it is. So. This is a prime example why I'm not going to permanently lock down the buttons till the very end because I'm going to run into more of this most likely. And what I will do towards the end is I will lift the button and carefully snip the button twine without nicking the upholstery fabric. And then I'll just place the button over a little bit further, about right there, and set it there. And then that way I'll have a completely even triangle. Now I you don't want to get too crazy with moving the buttons because it can, you know, shift all the different pleats, but we're definitely on the right track here. So yeah, that's your basic crash course in tufting, color lovers. Not as easy as it looks, huh? And I'm going to spare you the agony of the additional 103 buttons I have left to tuft. Yep, definitely got my work cut out for me this weekend. Please join me back here next week as I continue working on this 1970 sofa for my spring 2021 room challenge. 
It's going to be good, y'all. Stay tuned.